Question 1. You are scheduled to make a delivery. You arrive at your destination during the morning rush hour. The road is edged with double red lines. What do they mean? D. Unload only within a white box area. White boxes allow you to unload at any time, but during the day the length of stay is restricted. You should check nearby signs for the specific times. At other times, when it's not so busy, there may not be any restrictions on parking. If you want to pass DVSA theory test in first time, you can download our EOS app. App contains 2500 DVSA test questions, 250 hazard perception videos, 630 traffic road signs and 300 highway code rules. Even 98.50% people pass their test first time after using our app. You can find link in the description, download app for free from App Store which contains latest 2024 material licensed by DVSA authority, get 3 days free trial for a limited time. Let's get back to the video. Question 2. You're often involved in the carrying of high value goods. What security measures can you adopt? D. Vary your routes and rest stops. When carrying high value goods, you can become a target for thieves. Avoid developing a set routine or pattern. Vary your routes whenever possible to make it difficult for thieves to predict when and where your cargo can be intercepted. Question 3. What's the final thing you should do after recoupling a trailer? D. Release the trailer parking brake. It's important to work methodically when uncoupling or recoupling a tractor unit and trailer. After recoupling, check that all connections, systems and lights are working correctly. Question 4. Why are ropes unsuitable to tie down a load of scrap metal? C. Ropes can wear and snap. When securing a load, the driver must use the most suitable type of restraint. Scrap metal is likely to have sharp edges that could wear through straps or ropes. Security of the load is the driver's responsibility, a load that has been correctly secured shouldn't move if an emergency arises. Question 5. You're driving a laden articulated lorry with a maximum authorized mass of 38 tons on a dual carriageway in England. What speed limit applies to your vehicle after passing this sign? C. 60 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour may be the legal speed limit for a goods vehicle on a dual carriageway in England and Wales, but it doesn't mean that it's safe to drive at that speed. You should always take into account the road, weather and traffic conditions, and maintain safety margins. Question 6. Which of these signs means you can't drive your lorry past this point? B. No motor vehicles are allowed past this sign. Although motorcycle and car are shown, the restriction applies to all motor vehicles. Question 7. What could happen if you drive a double deck lorry with the top deck loaded and the lower deck empty? B. The lorry may overturn when cornering. If you're only carrying half a load on a double-deck lorry, this should be carried on the lower deck whenever possible. 
with only the top deck loaded, your lorry is top heavy and at risk of overturning as you drive around bends or corners. Question 8. When must you notify telephone companies that you're moving a high load? D. When the load's height exceeds 5.25 meters 17 feet 6 inches. You should tell telephone companies about your intended route when planning the movement of loads over 5.25 meters 17 feet 6 inches high. You should tell them in plenty of time before making the journey. Question 9. Before starting driving, which of the following should you complete on the center field of your tachograph chart? D. The starting point of your day's journey. Before starting your journey, you must record a number of items on your tachograph chart. One of these is where the journey begins. Question 10. You're on a motorway. Your lorry has a maximum authorized mass of more than 7.5 tons. What does this sign mean to you? D. You mustn't use the right-hand lane. At motorway roadworks, some lanes may be narrower than normal, and large vehicles may not be allowed to use those lanes. Look for weight limit signs to check for any lanes that you can't use. Move to the appropriate lane in good time. Question 11. What's the principal braking system on a lorry called? D. The service brake. The service brake is usually operated by the brake pedal. It's used to control the speed of the vehicle and to bring it to a halt safely. It may also incorporate an anti-lock braking system. Question 12. When is a high-sided vehicle most affected by side wind? C. When it's traveling empty. Take care if you're driving an empty high-sided vehicle when it's windy. Watch for places where the conditions could suddenly change, such as a gap between buildings or when passing under a bridge. Reduce your speed and stay alert for other road users who are also affected by these weather conditions. Question 13. You're driving a lorry towards a high bridge on a windy day. What should you expect? B. Lane closures. In windy weather, exposed stretches of road may have lane closures, or there may be diversions for some types of vehicle. Consider this when you're planning your journey, delays will add to your driving time. Question 14. Which vehicle is most at risk in windy conditions? A. High-sided lorry. High-sided vehicles are severely affected by side wind because of the large surface area of the bodywork. The risk of loss of control is increased if the vehicle is unladen. Question 15. During your working day, you change to another vehicle with the same type of tachograph. How should you keep your tachograph record up to date? C. Take the chart with you and use it in the other vehicle. If you change vehicles during the working day, you should take your chart with you and use it in the next vehicle. This isn't always possible, however, as charts produced by different manufacturers may not be interchangeable. 
In this case, you should use another chart, making sure that all the information for the day is recorded. Question 16. You're driving an articulated lorry on a narrow road. There's a left-hand bend ahead. Why may you need to move out before driving around the bend? B. To make room for the trailer cutting inches. You should always be aware of the amount of room your trailer needs when it's going around bends and corners. If you need to go onto the other side of the road, make sure there's no oncoming traffic before you move out. Question 17. Which of these vehicles will be most at risk of rollover when laden? A. Rollover usually happens as a result of the inside rear wheels of an articulated vehicle starting to lift when the driver changes direction sharply. This tends to happen when a driver is changing direction to leave a roundabout. If the load moves during the change of direction, the vehicle is increasingly at risk of rolling over. The problem often involves vehicles carrying fluids in bulk. Question 18. What's prohibited when a red route is in operation? C. Stopping or parking. The hours of operation of red routes vary from one area to another. As a rule, you mustn't stop on a red route, but there may be special marked boxes where loading and unloading can be carried out at certain times. Look out for signs giving information about the restrictions in place. Question 19. How frequently should the components of a fifth wheel coupling be inspected? B. Monthly. A fifth wheel must be maintained properly. It requires regular lubrication and inspection. This should be carried out monthly or every 10,000 kilometers whichever comes first. Question 20. You're loading goods of varying weights. How should they be distributed over the width of the vehicle? B. Heavy items near the center line, light items towards the sides. To achieve maximum stability, the load should be placed to keep the center of gravity as low as possible. To do this, heavy items should be placed close to the center line and spread over the full length of the vehicle. Lighter items should be placed along the sides. Question 21. What could be the result of overloading an axle while loading a lorry? A. Damage to the road surface. Overloading an axle has an impact on the environment, causing damage to road surfaces. You also risk a fine and driving penalties. Question 22. Which load may need to be transported at a controlled temperature? C. Chemicals. Some highly dangerous chemicals have to be transported at prescribed temperatures. Drivers must be fully trained in the use of these specially designed temperature controlled vehicles. Question 23. What would staff from HM Revenue and Customs, HMRC, be looking for at a roadside check? C. Red Diesel HMRC can check the type of fuel you're using, and the type and legality of your load. Red Diesel is dyed gas oil with a lower tax than regular diesel. 
it can only be used in agricultural and construction vehicles, such as tractors. Red diesel mustn't be used in freight transport. Question 24. You're uncoupling a trailer. What must you do before disconnecting any of the airlines? A. Apply the trailer parking brake. Whenever you uncouple a trailer, you must work through the uncoupling process methodically. Start by making sure that the brakes are applied on both the vehicle and the trailer. Question 25. What can happen to drivers who break EU tachograph regulations? D. They can be heavily fined. The driver must take responsibility and follow the driver's hours and tachograph rules. Failure to do so can result in legal action and penalties such as a fine. Question 26. What must you do when using a vehicle fitted with an analog tachograph? A. Carry enough approved charts. Make sure you carry enough approved tachograph charts for your journey. Store your spare charts in a plastic wallet to keep them clean and undamaged. Question 27. Under EU rules, your minimum daily rest is 11 hours. On three days of the week this may be reduced to what length of time? D. 9 hours. Under EU rules, you must have a minimum daily rest of 11 consecutive hours. A reduced daily rest period is any period of rest of at least 9 hours, but less than 11 hours. Question 28. You're approaching a bridge that has no height restriction on it. What's the minimum height under the bridge? D. 5 meters 16 feet 6 inches. The headroom under bridges in the UK is at least 5 meters 16 feet 6 inches, unless otherwise stated. Where the overhead clearance is arched, this headroom is normally only between the limits marked. Question 29. You arrive at an incident involving a motorcyclist. The motorcyclist is unconscious and bleeding. What should be your priority? A. Check the casualties airway. At a traffic incident, the danger of further collisions and fire needs to be dealt with first. Then you should deal with injuries in this order. Airway, breathing, compressions and bleeding. Don't remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless it's essential to do so. Question 30. You've stopped at the scene of an incident where there are casualties. What should you do to help? D. Keep injured people warm and comfortable. If you stop to give help at an incident and there are casualties, don't move injured people unless there's further danger. Keep them warm, comfortable and calm. Don't give them anything to drink. Question 31. What should you do if you're the first person to arrive at the scene of an incident? D. Warn other traffic to prevent further collisions. Warn other traffic of the incident without putting yourself or others at risk. Once the danger of further collisions is dealt with, call the emergency services. 
while you're waiting for them to arrive, keeping casualties or witnesses calm is important, but never offer a cigarette because of the risk of fire. Question 32. You arrive at the scene of an incident where a motorcyclist is lying in the middle of the road and unconscious. What's the first thing you should do? D. Warn other traffic. At the scene of an incident, the first priority is to prevent any further collisions by warning traffic. You can warn other traffic by switching on hazard warning lights or displaying an advance warning triangle, or by any other appropriate means. Question 33. Your steering suddenly becomes heavy to turn. What could make this happen? A. A fault with the power-assisted steering. If the steering becomes heavy, the power-assisted steering may have failed. It's also possible that your vehicle has a puncture or the load might have shifted. You should stop safely, investigate the cause and call for help if necessary. Question 34. How can you help to reduce the impact of road transport on the environment? B. By braking in good time. Good forward planning will reduce fuel consumption and engine emissions. This will cause less wear on the vehicle and its tires, as well as reducing environmental pollution. Question 35. What should you do to prevent fuel spillage? A. Close and secure the filler cap. Fuel spilled on the road is a serious danger to other road users, especially motorcyclists. To prevent this from happening, make sure the filler cap is secure after refueling. If you want to pass DVSA theory test in first time, you can download our EOS app. App contains 2500 DVSA test questions, 250 hazard perception videos, 630 traffic road signs and 300 highway code rules. Even 98.50% people pass their test first time after using our app. You can find link in the description, download app for free from App Store which contains latest 2024 material licensed by DVSA Authority, get 3 days free trial for a limited time.